Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one in a best of three between Eugen and A. Lennart and this is the grand final of the Great Paradox Tourney. I am very much looking forward to this one. It's been a long time coming but the final is finally here and uh, what good players we have to watch today. Eugen finding himself here through many best of threes, a full best of three in the semi-final, won 2-1 against Gallo Neal to get to this final. Lennart defeating Neff in the semi-final 2-0 to prove himself worthy of a place in the final. So this is going to be awesome. If we have anything to go by on the third place final, that was an incredible couple games. But now we have the actual final between potentially the two best players in Steel Division currently. Let's have a look at this map. We're on show. We have Eugen on the Guards Armoured and the 91st Luftlander for A. Lennart. This matchup is an interesting one. Lennart's going to be reliant quite hard on the Pack 40s and the Stug 3s, especially in the mid game. He also will want to control the skies so that he can bring in HS129s to pop the armoured targets of Eugen. On the side of Eugen, it's going to be up to him whether or not he wants to use like Humber Mark 3s uh, to try and push an advantage against the uh, Ersatztruppen, for example, or if he wants to go like heavier than that and take in like Cromwell 7s and Cromwell 6s. He does have a Cromwell 6 on the bottom side which is a good choice for taking on the pack 40s. If they're micro correctly those Cromwell 6s can do a lot of work and that's what I would expect to see out of Eugen. He definitely knows how to use the fire position command against the 1200 meter range AT guns so I'll expect to see that as the game continues. But uh, Leonard has got quite a few troops down so let's have a look at uh, what he's bringing. He has the Falschemjägers on this top side with an Ersatztruppen. There is going to be uh, Command Infantry with an Ersatz and the Falschemjäger to go in the town. There's also a Flammenwerfer squad, not something we see very often. I have to check the price of those uh, to see if it warrants them being brought in. There's also the Ersatz and Flamethrower going to the bottom side of the town. For the centre, that's going to be an AT gun and some Ersatz. For the bottom side, most likely Falschen Panzer out there with what looks like a pack 40 at the start coming in a no pull blitz. Um, there is the Falschen Jäger there with a command infantry, and on the very bottom side, more Falschen Panzer out there with the Ersatz Truppen. Okay, over on the side of Eugen, on the top side, we have the Universal Carrier with some scouts. There is going to be a unit of rifles, motorized rifles, and the motorized rifle leader heading into the town. We have the rifles there going to the bottom side of the town. Humber Mark III for the center with some recon and rifles for the mid bottom. Then on the far bottom side, there is two units of rifles accompanying a Cromwell 6 and this universal carrier with the scouts, which is going to provide the recon information, allows the Cromwell 6 to see the pack 40s coming and hopefully find the kills onto those. Now the double infantry. Cromwell combo is something that I would replicate on the other side as well. We will likely see later on Stur 42 with two Ersatztruppen coming out of the 91st Luftlander, but that's more likely to be something we see in phase B. For now, though, this is the great Paradox Tawny, and this is the grand final. I am very much looking forward to these games. This has been a rather long deployment, so let's just speed it up, get this game underway, and see what action we have waiting for us, because I am definitely just so excited to see what happens. And we're off. Let me just slow things back down for you guys, and we'll see where these units are going. So it looks like Leonard here, he's using fast move commands, and then he's doing the shift unload when they get to the positions he wants, which is a nice idea. Whereas you can see here the green lines coming out of Eugen, they are unload at position commands. So Lennart preferring the fast move and then unload. Takes a little bit more micro at the start of the game, that may be why uh, Lennart took a little bit longer for his deployment. But either way, 
It's going to be important to watch this town engagement. We have the flam, the flam verfers in there. This flam and verfer going to be dropping the smoke on himself to keep himself out of line of fire. Rifles there taking a chunk from one of the flam and verfers. This is very interesting indeed. Erzats and Volschemjägers going to be engaging the infantry and under fire themselves from half tracks and also this Humber Mark III. Flam and verfer again dropping smoke. They do have four smoke grenades so Lennart making good use of these to cover his infantry is great to see Bolshem Jaeger there trying to move up as well as he will be wanting to find the kill onto these half tracks with the Panzerfaust but one of the Flammenwerf is dead let's check the price of those they are 20 points apiece not quite Canadian flamethrowers which are 10 points apiece on the bottom side Eugen is also microing his Cromwell 6 against the Pac 40 quite nicely and this is what we like to see out of high play, high level play in Steel Division. The ability to sort of watch multiple sides of the map at once. Like, Eugen sort of is microing both his infantry on this top side, he's microing his half tracks here, as you can see, and he's also microing on the bottom side. He's got this Cromwell 6 trying to focus down this Pack 40. But the Pack 40 has found itself behind a couple trees there. Which could make things quite awkward for this Cromwell 6. It looks like uh, Eugen may have lost line of sight onto the Pack 40 since his scouts are playing catch up. And uh, he doesn't really want to get anything killed by the Cromwell 6, but the Pack 40 revealing itself there by bailing out the Universal Carrier. Quite a nice shot there from the Pack 40. Does stop the fire coming down onto the Urzats. Up in this town, though, seems like Lennart's made himself quite a lot of ground. With the fire support of the half tracks, I reckon that these rifles could make some ground back into the town. But more reinforcements will continue to pour in from Lennart. And there's also a Panzer 39H on the field, which is going to be engaging the Humber Mark III. The Humber Mark III can't really do much against the uh, Panzer 39. And the Panzer 39 does have the penetration to kill a Humber Mark III. So Eugen's going to have to make sure he gets out of the way of that. But in the centre so far, Lennart has made himself quite a lot of ground. Found himself 94 points early on. But with the uh, ground being taken on the bottom side by Eugen here, uh, we can see that that has been cut off 50-50 across the board. Cromwell 6 going to be advancing forwards. Going to be going for the fire position onto this pack 40 once again. Eugen does have that spotted by the scouts, and that's why the importance of having recon with your Cromwell 6 is certainly a thing. You also see a Cromwell 6 coming into the center. This is where these Pan Fulsion Panzer Abwehrs really come into play because he's got that into a really nice position on this crossroad where, like, if a tank comes up, he's going to get the ambush in there, which is really, really nice. Panzer 39 still engaging the Humber Mark III. Humber Mark III just about getting away. But a lot of pressure on the map now for Lennart. Especially with these rifles being pinned down and now being behind enemy lines. HS129B3 gets the internal fragments onto the Cromwell 6. And that is not very nice for Eugen. His Tempest really not getting on target either. Too fast for its own good. Finally gets on target. HS129 is going to go down. That's a pretty important kill there. And it seems as though Eugene was prepared for that HS129 strike out of Lennart. But yeah, Eugene losing the ammo on this Cromwell 6 is devastating. Does mean that he is going to have to purchase a supply vehicle to get that back online. In the meantime, going to be relying on this Cromwell 6 that is currently moving into range of this Volsham Panzer Abwehr. And just as I was saying that these Volsham Panzer Abwehr are going to start to become relevant, it's exactly what's going to happen unless this M5 half-track can take the shot for the Cromwell 6. But this is on return fire, so Lennart's going to be able to choose who he fires at. He's got the aligning there. He's holding fire. Internal fragments again. The Cromwell 6 internal fragments is absolutely devastating. Okay, now is definitely a time to be purchasing some supply. You want to get those Cromwell 6s back online. Another internal fragments onto the M5 half-track. 
Propulsion Panzer Abwehr doesn't find a kill, but definitely prevents the push coming out of Eugen. Tempest is going to continue to pin down the Pack 40, rifles stopping the Ersatz Troop in advance on the bottom side, but won't be able to stop the Falsham Jaegers pushing through this tree line. Um, these rifles will most likely not win against a three star Falsham Jaeger unit. In the town, things still going relatively well for Lennart. Lennart's found a line of sight onto one of these half tracks. Eugen immediately reacting to that, wants to get it out of the way. Transmission damage though may allow the Panzer 39 just enough time to find the kill shot. Not quite yet. Universal carrier, motorized rifles, looks like they're going to be trying to go for shots onto this Volschermjäger in the open. On this bottom side, both of these Cromwells are going to be fast moving to the same position. I'd like to see the supply come in sooner than later. But there is a very big possibility that Eugen doesn't have supply until phase B, which could be pretty devastating. Cromwell 7 is now rolling up. It's going to be up to these motorized rifles to find the positioning of this Falschen Panzer Abwehr. Rifles there surrendering Erzatz goes back ground to Eugen. And that's going to take things back to a 50-50, but Lennart now on the 271 points. This is crazy. Like, this, like, basically what we should be seeing right now is Eugen making a lot of ground in Phase A, especially with two Cromwell 6s on the field. But with both of them sort of disabled, it's just no pressure on this bottom side for Eugen anymore. And uh, it seems as though even Urzats can just run up against these rifles and discover them. It's a shame that these rifles aren't technically affecting the front line just yet, because otherwise uh, Eugen would be in a better position. But uh, this Pack 40, that can take out these half tracks very easily, and that's going to stop them supporting the advance of these motorized rifles. Especially while the Cromwell 6s are both taken out. Motorized rifles on this top side engaging Falsham Jaegers at 300 meter range. Definitely not something you want to be doing. Didn't take too much damage, but um, yeah, not the most ideal engagement. Track wheel destroyed for the Panzer 39 here. Uh, Cromwell 4 going to be coming up to support the town. Plus one has been found once again for Lennart. So now these scouts have also been found. Pan Volsham Panzer Abwehr have revealed them. So multiple Erzatz Truppen on target. Scouts can't do anything about that. These rifles have been revealed by the Erzatz on the bottom side. Ground being made in the center for Eugen. But I still think that these Erzatz Truppen are going to be able to hold up this push for quite a while. Especially considering these half tracks can't support the infantry but due to this pack 40. This pack 40 has literally been the bane of Eugen so far in this game. And now we see the Stug or the Stur 42 coming up as well. And that's going to make things even harder for Eugen to push across the open. Two damage there done onto that motorized rifle squad. All these rifles are opening up onto the pack 36, which will remove that. And then the uh, Cromwell 7 can maybe move around that top side there of that tree line. But uh, the Pack 40 is always going to be there until those Cromwell 6s are back online. And uh, yeah, it must be the case that uh, Eugen doesn't have supply until Phase B. Because otherwise I would have expected these to be reloaded by now and back to the front line. But with that pack going down, this Cromwell 7 has a lot of r room to manoeuvre. And is now going to be attack moving past the top side of that tree line which is good. In the town though, Lennart's definitely holding strong. Really, really good job by him to secure that early on with the use of the Flammenwerfer and the Volschermjägers here. Rifles revealing themselves to Erzatz. It's going to allow the half tracks to open up. And we're back to 50-50 again. But every time, Lennart is creeping his score forwards. 420 points now. Pack 40, finding shot once again, onto half tracks, M5 half track here, in a pretty sticky spot, going to be forced to fall back, Cromwell 7, probably does want to fast move up this road towards this Erzatz, but does need to be careful of the Volschmjäger advancing across the open. Up in the town, one of the half tracks went down, Erzatz trooping though are nearly dead, Cromwell 4 is coming around the bottom side. Okay, Erzatz Troopen down. These Erzatz Troopen 
are going to be pinned and surrendered. I think what would be good here is if uh, Eugen can get line of sight onto the Shadir 42 without being in line of sight of the Pack 40. But currently is in line of sight of the Pack 40. And uh, that could end very badly for Lennart. <laughs> or for Eugen, sorry. Unless the Tempest comes in to save the day. Pins that down very nicely indeed. This Cromwell 7 needs to get rid of these Volsumiegers. If he does, then Eugen's going to find himself a very nice salient, which is currently giving him a plus one. Number Mark 3 is being hit by the Panzer 39. And at that range, I think Eugen has to be careful here. The Cromwell 4 could find itself dying to the Panzer 39, which would be absolutely devastating. Tempest coming in again. Gets the pin. Gets the kill. Pack 40 is gone. Marder 2 now arriving. Currently, one is engaging the Cromwell 7s. And this is going to be Lennart's choice to deal with the tanks coming out of Eugen. They won't really stand up to Fireflies later in the game. But uh, for now, definitely a good choice for dealing with the Cromwell 7. Panzer 39. Going to be moving up to this top side to prevent the salient coming out of Eugen. Eugen now counting up his points, getting back level with Lennart, and both of his Cromwell 6s are now reloading thanks to this Bedford supply. So Tempest still flying about there, has done its job taking out the Pack 40. Now allows the Cromwell 7 to get into a good position to engage both the Stur 42 and the Marder 2. At close range, the Cromwell 7 should easily beat Armada 2. As long as it can actually get into range, the Cromwell 7 should win every time. The only issue here is that the Cromwell 7 doesn't actually have any veterancy. But on this top side of mid, as that's trooping pinned down by the Humber Mark 3 is quite nice. How's Eugen going to do this? Ideally, he wants to try and kill off at least one of these Marder 2s. But with the arrival of this Pack 38, that could make things very difficult. Marder 2 pops the, the Humber Mark 3. Can Eugen see this coming? I have a feeling that the Reki will see that. Yes, they will. So Eugen can see the Pack 38. Motorized rifles here are going to be ran down by Bolshemjägers. Plenty of nice fire support coming out from Lennart. Eugen really has to find a reply. He does have his own Cromwell 6s, and getting those back into the fight will be very important. He's also now bringing up a 17-pounder. Whether or not that can find the kill onto the Marder 2 or the Stur 42 remains to be seen, because Lennart will be able to do the same thing that Eugen did to him, in that he can fire position the Stur 42 at short range onto the 17-pounder and find the kill that way. Sexton's going to be brought up, is now firing at the Pack 38. Crusader AA has been brought onto the field. Plus one back in favour of Lennart after Lennart's controlled the top side and is now pushing on the bottom side quite heavily. Stiff 42 is going to be finishing off some of this infantry by the looks of things, although that Cromwell 7 is now engaging. The Marder 2. Bolshemjägers are getting very close though. And this is getting quite hairy for Eugen's Cromwell 7. If he doesn't get the pin onto the Marder 2. Or even kill it off. Then he's going to be in a very, very tough spot. Marder 2 creeping around from the other side as well. And he's got the Stur 42 constantly hitting him from range. Which he can't fire back at. And that 15 HE power is eventually going to pin the Cromwell 7. Now the Falschermjägers in this tree line did get taken care of. Which is quite nice. And the 17 pounder now has found a shot onto the Marta 2. Does find the kill. Cromwell 6s are arriving to reinforce this bottom side. Are going to come under fire from the Stur 42. Cromwell 6s can't really pin a Stur 42 like a Stur 42 can pin a Cromwell 6 due to the armor difference. But we can see the reinforcement of a Firefly 5C to the center of the map. And like I was saying before, 
Marder 2s don't stand up well to fireflies unless they get lucky. Cromwell 4 here. Going to be killing off these Fusiliers with the help of the half tracks. So playing around this town quite nicely, not over investing towards it since he does know that Lennart has the infantry advantage. Sexton now going for the shot onto the Marder 2. Cromwell 7 going for the close range shot as well. Or with that shooter wounded, the Cromwell 7 almost showed itself to the Pack 38. That would have been devastating. Not quite there though. Cromwell 7 back in action. If a Sexton gets a direct hit onto the Marder 2, it can get the kill there by the way. But uh, oh, Pack 38, it does have line of sight. Devastation for Eugene in the centre of the map there. Pack 38 in a very, very nice position. Managed to creep it forwards out of the sight of Recon and finds the ambushing shot onto the Cromwell 7. Fantastic job, Lennart, cleaning up that tank in the centre of the map. Oh, just really, really well played. Sexton going to be too late to arty that out. Lennart already moving it to a completely different location. Firefly 5C's got to be careful that it doesn't fall for the same trick. As it is the only thing that Eugen currently has to challenge the uh, Marder 2's. And honestly, I think I'd rather see this Firefly on the bottom side at the moment. Because here is like a lot more open. You're a lot less likely to get ambushed. There's also this Marder 2 to kill and the Stur 42. And both those targets are very good for a Firefly 5C. Also putting pressure on the bottom side does make things... Well, does force Lennart to sort of react to that. So the Marder 2 from the mid would probably come down. We did see the brief introduction of the ME109 G6R6 and the HS129B3 to the field in the air. But with the Tempest flying about, doesn't look like uh, Lennart wanted to risk that. Cromwell 6 is now engaging the Marder 2. I'm not sure that Eugen's aware of this engagement. Never mind, <laughs> Cromwell 6 is going to do the job takes out the Marda quite nicely. Pack 38 does have line of sight onto this Cromwell 6. Then that's just got to pull the trigger. And we might see another Cromwell go down to that Pack 38. Firefly is now moving down to this bottom side. Eugene having the same thoughts as I. Cromwell 7 moving to the centre instead. This Firefly, definitely going to be a very good choice to take out the Marder 2 and the Stur 42. But it's going to have to be careful of this Falschenpanz Abwehr. If this Multirose Rifle doesn't find the Falschenpanz Abwehr, we could see another ambush coming out there. The initial Falschenpanz Abwehr in the middle of the map that uh, internal fragmented the Cromwell 6 definitely helped give Lennart the advantage in Phase A. And so far, well, things continuing to go in Lennart's favour on the top side. This Panzer 39 has been invaluable up here. Cromwell 7 has to find the kill there, surely. Okay, Portfolion Panzer Abwehr were found and forced to surrender. Erzat's Troopen also pinned down here. This is good. This means that Eugen can make some ground. He can start to fast move his Firefly forwards. He can get into line of sight of this Marder. And possibly kill it off. Although the Marder is nicely hidden behind some trees here. The Stur 42 also has some trees to hide behind. So the Firefly might have some trouble finding the kills. But does have the help of the Sexton and the 25 pounder if he likes. HS129 though. 16 AP. Gets the tracks wheel destroy onto the Firefly. With that occurring the Marder 2 is able to just pop out of its cover. And start firing onto the half tracks and this universal carrier of Eugen. That is not ideal at all for Eugen right now. That track will destroy puts itself in a very awkward position. Looks like in the middle of the map pack 38 was taken out most likely due to artillery. HS129 coming back around for another strike onto the Cromwell 6 this time isn't successful. Bedford Supply is on its way to repair the Firefly 5C. He's going to have to get that done sooner than later. 
And he's going to be ha having to hope that this Firefly recovers soon. Otherwise, this Marder could just consistently take pot shots at the Firefly 5C until it dies. Which is uh, definitely not what uh, Eugen wants to happen. Cromwell 7 now engaging the Marder 2. Marder 2 pops the Cromwell 6. Had to hit eventually. Sherman 5 now engaging the Marder 2. That is in favour of the Sherman 5, I feel. And the Sherman 5 find the kill though. Forces it to fall back. That's a start. Might allow Eugen enough time to fix up his Firefly and get that mobile again. On this top side, two units of rifles being used to reinforce. Cromwell 7 is starting to rip to shreds the Folchmegas and the Fusiliers. Finish things off on that top side, gaining back some ground. Eugen does want to stop does want to stop the plus one bleed at some point. This Firefly 5C has recovered its morale. It looks like the Marder, though, is going for the shot onto the Bedford Supply. That is cheeky. That is very cheeky there from Leonard. Trying to take out the Bedford Supply, stop the Firefly from being repaired. Ideally, Eugen does want to hide this in the hedgerow, though, just so that it doesn't happen again. Because there isn't really any recon here from Lennart. So if that Bedford Supply was hidden, I feel like you wouldn't see it. But either way, we head back to the neutral perspective. There is a very large armour presence down here from Eugen, which Lennart can see and has reacted to that with multiple Marder 2s. Any sort of units like the Sherman 5s and the Cromwell 6s can't do anything about the Marder 2s. It's going to be solely reliant on this uh, Firefly uh, 5C. And as long as this uh, Bedford Supply is suffering from a morale penalty there, um, that's not going to be fixing the Firefly. It's finally fixing once again. The Bedford Supply, I think, is uh, not able to be seen. Never mind. It's uh, right in line of sight. Emmy one and I GTBR21. No way. It's going to go for the Bedford Supply again. Never actually hit the Firefly 5C. I'm surprised about that. I thought this ME109 might focus down the supply, but uh, either way, keeping that Firefly 5 pinned, especially on top of flames, is going to lead it to being pinned down, and then multiple Marder 2s can just continuously fire until Lennart is successful. <laughs> That's just a crazy play down here from Lennart. Keeping this Bedford supply from fixing that those tracks is just so important. It really is. And it seems like it's only a matter of time until these Marders actually get the kill. Uh, Eugen's going to have to like sacrifice his Cromwell 6 to keep that alive. Or even the, the Sherman 5 there. The engine destroy now coming in as well. And the Firefly goes down. Eventually the Marders find the kill. And now they have the range advantage against the Sherman 5 and the Cromwell 6. The Bedford Supply also gets killed. Wow, things going back towards 50-50 for Eugen. We are on 49% territory lead. Or, well, 51% territory lead for Lennart. But there you go, Marder 2 gets the kill on the bottom side onto the Sherman. There is some ground being made in this town. And not much, too much to contest on the top side. Befell Panzer 3 is on the field here. But this Cromwell 7 could run over a Panzer 3, no problem. Sherman 5 coming into the town does provide a lot of fire support onto this infantry. 17 pounder. Also a pretty decent choice to take care of these Marder 2s. But so far, things not looking very good on this bottom side for Lennart. He's going to have to rely on Phase or Fort Eugen. Um, he's going to have to rely on Phase C. We have now come into Phase C. And I'd like to see more Fireflies like join the field so that he can make a push off that because that firefly was the key to break through the Marder 2s anyway Cromwell 7 is pushing up quite hard here almost in range of the Panzer Abwehr moving up tanks without the support of infantry could be the downfall there of Eugen if he's not too careful Crusader AA Mark 1 and the Cromwell 6. Going to be trying to finish off some Erzatz Truppen. 
scouts have been spotted and are going to be popped. This Cromwell 7 could stop these Erzatz Troopen from making this ground. But currently Eugen not moving that Cromwell 7 at all, even though it's probably not in danger at all. Interesting. Back to 50-50. 13 minutes left on the clock. Eugen has some work to do, but I feel like he could find an advantage somewhere. Befell Panzer III, however, with the support of the ME109 G2 BR21, is going to be taking shots at the Cromwell 7. That Cromwell 7 just going to be reversing away from that engagement, though. Harder 2. Looks like that's engaging the Cromwell 7 in the mid. I'm not quite sure how this is going to end because I'd like to see another Firefly come into the bottom side but we haven't seen one purchase just yet. It seems as though the air support from Lennart has been just enough to keep this from boiling over in Eugen's favour because in the late game like Eugen should have the advantage with the Fireflies versus the fire support coming out of Lennart, like Stir 42s and Marder 2s, is a pretty weak combination. And we've even seen Cromwell 6s take out the Marder 2s. But it's getting to the point of no return, with only 20 minutes left on the clock. Erzatz Trupen were killed off here, which does save some ground on the bottom side. Eugen is finding himself a plus one soon, maybe. But he's got to hold on to it. And the Marder 2 here is now engaging his Cromwell 6. That Cromwell 6 has got to find the open top kill with the HE onto the Marder 2. Lennart's backing off from that. We're seeing the Sherman 5s and the Cromwell 7s engage the Pioneers. And Eugen is going to surrender. Minor defeat, 27 minutes and 55 seconds. Interesting game. Very interesting game. I think the real crux there was the kill onto the Bedford Supply, or not necessarily the kill, but forcing that Bedford Supply away from the Firefly on that bottom side was such a big blow to Eugen, because if he'd fixed the tracks on that Firefly, it could have easily cleaned up the Marder 2s on that bottom side, and I'm surprised he didn't decide to save up to bring in another one down there. Interesting stuff indeed. Maybe he didn't have another one on this division, who knows. But if we look at these kills, the Tempest definitely showing us how it's done. HS129B3 kill, two ME109G6R6s. It seemed as though Eugen had the, the air under control from the beginning, but those ME109G2BR21s found their way in, got those cheeky shots. We also saw the HS129ME109s sort of come in as well, um, like as a little combo after the Tempest, like like basically came off the field due to lack of fuel. And it seemed like Lennart timed the strikes very well with the fuel running out on the Tempest because Eugen was using the Tempest to ground strafe quite a lot, especially onto that pack 40 in the mid game. 17 pounder though, cleaned up a couple of Armada 2s on the bottom side and we saw the Cromwell 6 get a Armada 2 kill. I don't know. I felt like in this matchup, the guards armored should easily win on the ground unless like the 91st Luftlander controls the skies like easily but Lennart definitely didn't have an easy time controlling the skies so I think what it just came down to was the Panzer Abwehrs in phase A sort of removed the pressure that Eugen had on those two Cromwell 6s he got two internal fragments that was pretty unlucky. And then he didn't have a supply to, to fix those up until phase B. That was really bad for his for Eugen's phase A play and that definitely let Lennart have a plus one at some point. Moving into phase B, it was all about the fact that that Firefly got tracked by the HS129 and then playing around that. And it kind of just led to the victory for Lennart. Not the most exciting game towards the end there, but look at this Panzer 39, absolute hero in the top side by the town. Cleaned up a Cromwell 4. And I was saying how Eugen would have to be careful about that engagement. It seems like it went in favour of Lennart. 
Took out the Humber Mark III, took out many half tracks. Really, really good job with this Panzer 39 in the town there by Lennart. Great job indeed. Pack 40 only ended up killing up killing off half tracks and the universal carrier. And the Stier 42 killed off a 17 pounder in the end. But it all came down to these Marda 2s in the bottom side. Somehow managed to keep a lot of them alive and uh, did a lot of work with them. Fantastic job by Lennart, not relying so much on the air. Actually had that 1,200 meter range engagement on the ground. Interesting stuff. Lennart winning out either way, finding himself the first victory in this best of three in the grand final of the Great Paradox Tourney. In terms of kills and losses, 1,640 kills for Lennart, 1,520 losses and vice versa for Eugen. So things pretty close as to be expected. It's going to be up to Eugen in the second game to bring this back if he wants to become the victor of the Great Paradox Tourney. Lennart only needs to find himself one more game now in order to do that himself. I'm excited to go into the second game. It was a little bit disappointing towards the end of this one. Seemed to just sort of peter off and then just end due to Eugen's surrender. But um, yeah, either way, interesting stuff. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.